Switching gears to Europe, um, uh, we are excited to, to welcome our next uh, speaker, um, a very experienced real estate debt investor, also with a pan-European perspective. Um, Dale uh, is with DRC Sevels, um, recently um, DRC, a privately owned company, recently acquired by Sevels, um, and will present to us um, opportunities, chances in the European market, a pan-European approach to real estate debt. Dale, the stage is yours. Thank you, David. <clears throat> Cognizant, I have uh, one of those after lunch spots in a title that says a pan-European approach to real estate debt. We didn't take a pan-European approach to real estate debt, so I will be focused more on where we did invest across the region and why. Because Europe, as you probably know, for some of those who have been in the equity markets, isn't really a market that you can um, uh, just use one brush with. It's a series of separate markets which all have different characteristics. And as opportunistic investors, we had to consider all of those dynamics. So just um, backing up for a second, why are we here? Is this changing? There we go. And it's an interesting juxtaposition to the US market, and I, and I think it's interesting sequencing. Um, our market has opened more recently. It was really Basel II combined with the GFC, which led to the disintermediation of the banks, which continues today. Our opportunities probably been, been enhanced um, by the current market conditions caused by COVID. So there is an opportunity in debt. It, it's not fleeting. Um, it's a permanent change here, and it's still emerging. Um, but the banks still control at least 75% of our market. I mean, then that's a UK number. So across the continent, the number is higher. So the behavior of the banks really dictates where we, as non-bank lenders, should be focusing our time and energy. But really, as I said, there's no pan-European approach. When I looked back at the five and a half billion or so of lending that we've done over the last 10 years across both UK and continental Europe, I realized that we're, there were really four things that drove the allocation of that capital across the region. Um, it, the first one is the, the one I just left off with. What, what was the condition or the behavior of the banks? Um, and